Welcome back to The Missing Link. This lesson covers another batch of messaging scripts, although it's going to be even more fun today because we have some new media available through voice and email outreach. This is our chance to make our communication highly customized and personal. Here's how this works. First, we'll call each lead and be prepared to follow the connect call format that we'll cover in one of our next lessons. Second, if we get the lead's voicemail, we'll leave one of our scripted messages and then send a corresponding email. Third, we'll repeat this process for all four scripts or until we get them on the phone, whichever comes first. Do you know that most people making sales calls give up after the first attempt? This is typically because we don't want to come across as pushy, needy, or annoying, but the facts don't lie. Most sales happen after the fourth call, not after the first call. As with all parts of the missing link, we have a specific messaging framework that the warm call sequence follows. So this isn't just about trying to connect over and over with similar messages. Too many people make a habit of pitching solutions, discussing features, and offering value propositions over a voicemail. Long voicemails won't get you responses. Voicemails should be 17 seconds or less. They should merely pique a prospect's interest, save your real pitch for later. When it comes to the email side of the sequence, it's important to outline some important rules for high performance. Email best practices evolve very quickly and frequently, so leaning on what worked three years ago is a losing strategy for today. Keep subject lines to seven words or less. Avoid spam-like subject lines. This is particularly challenging these days because spammers are burning through every legitimate phrase imaginable in their quest to trick people. Your best bet, as always, is to test. Share your drafts in the comments, ask your friends and coworkers, and see how actual prospects respond to variations. Keep email messages to about three sentences or less. This is especially true for sequences like ours, but even in your general email newsletters and campaigns, you're almost certainly writing too much. There's a reason that the meme TLDR, or too long didn't read, exists. Since we need to establish our scripts before talking about how to handle the calls, let's review some example voicemail scripts and corresponding email scripts in the order we'll follow in the sequence. For connect call one, attempt one. In your first attempt, you should reference the ongoing LinkedIn sequence dialog, even if it's been completely one-sided. So if you got any meaningful replies from the connection during that phase, you may want to reference those here too. If there was no real back and forth, you'll need to be a bit more creative. Here's one example where we play the part of a recruiting firm. Hi, Jessica. I valued our back and forth on LinkedIn over the past few months and just shared your recent controller job opening post with the 65 Dallas-Fort Worth law firms in my network. Please keep me posted on progress. If it's interesting, I have four other ideas for getting even more exposure with Green and Fazio's recruiting efforts. Please give me a call. This is Doug from TeamZip here in Dallas. Thanks. Notice the give and get flow where I make clear that I've performed a favor up front to persuade the contact to give my message its due consideration. Yours could just as easily be tweeting a blog article, mentioning the contact in a post from a third party who needs her services, or anything else that offers value. This, by the way, is Robert Cialdini's rule of reciprocity. By performing even a small favor without request, your prospect's more likely to consider your request. Notice also that I don't introduce myself up front. My message is about the lead and what she's already gotten out of our relationship. Upfront introductions and voicemail messages get deleted quickly because they sound like cold calls. Here's another example that's worked well for us. Jim, I try to keep my LinkedIn network small and meaningful, so I've enjoyed our dialogue over the past few months. My wife says it's like I'm running for mayor, but I'm just old school. Hoping to connect by phone for a few minutes and hear more about Green and Fazio, including all the team growth you've been seeing lately. Please give me a call. This is Doug with Team Zip in Dallas. Thank you very much. Now for me, this script comes across as a dapper gentleman or a lady, perhaps with a British accent, who's interested in respectful conversation with like-minded professionals. No sleazy language to set off anyone's IPAs. Notice that I still mention Dallas to demonstrate a higher level of relevance for our lead. Immediately after leaving our voicemail message, we'll send a corresponding email message. For our first attempt, the email is virtually identical to the voicemail message, though we do want it to vary just enough that it seems natural. Jessica, 
I've enjoyed our dialogue on LinkedIn these past months, and I just shared your recent controller job opening with about 65 DF Dub firms in my network. Hope it fills quickly, but please keep me posted. I do have four other ideas for getting even more exposure with Green and Fazio's recruiting efforts. Feel free to ignore the voicemail I just left, but please give me a call when you have a few minutes. Thanks. After the first try, we'll wait three days, and if we haven't heard back, we'll make our second attempt. Because we want to build some familiarity, this script resembles the first, building off the direction of the conversation. Here's an example. Hi, Jessica. I just saw your press release about the new office location. Very exciting. As you probably noticed from my LinkedIn profile, I work with DFW law firms who are trying to get to the right people in the right seats as they grow staff, so I wanted to reach out a second time and offer a few ideas for your consideration. Some of these were referenced in our LinkedIn exchange last month, by the way. You should have an email from me last Friday, but I'm going to send you a new one with a 30-second video I just made for you. If you have a few minutes, please give me a call or book 15 minutes on my calendar using the link in my email. This is Doug with TeamZip. Thank you very much. And then our email follow-up can be much simpler because we'll address our key messaging inside of that custom video. Hi, Jessica. Here's that 30-second video I just made for you. If you have a few minutes, please give me a call or book 15 minutes on my calendar using the link in my signature below. Thank you. Now I'm going to show you one easy way to create these videos, but I'd be remiss to not tell you first how incredibly effective they are when done correctly. And as a side note, you can also send custom videos in LinkedIn messages, although at the time of this recording, that's only supported in the LinkedIn mobile app, so it's not an efficient thing to do in bulk. There are a number of free or cheap apps that let you use your webcam to create quick videos. In a pinch, you can even use a smartphone app. The most important thing is that you need the videos to be uploaded to the cloud so that you can link to them. And ideally, you want to generate an animated GIF preview that you can stick into the email message. Let's walk through this with our tool of choice, GoVideo from Vidyard. This is currently a Google Chrome only extension, so if you don't use Google Chrome for your browser, you may want to look into other video capture tools in your app store. Loom.com is another great option with a free version. Once I've installed the Vidyard extension in Chrome, I can simply come up here and click on the icon to start recording. You will need to create a free account first. Now, just having a custom video is great, but you'll maximize your views if you can demonstrate at the beginning that this is indeed a custom video created just for the recipient. The standard way to do that is to write the recipient's name on a piece of paper or a small dry erase board and wave it around for a few seconds as you begin your recording but we'll often pull up the contact's website or a photo on a tablet instead. Basically, you want something that grabs the viewer's attention as, hey, that's me, or that's us. A tablet's great because you don't waste markers or paper. Plus, it looks more polished than most handwriting. As for the content of the video, you can get creative as long as you don't create a sales pitch. Depending on the nature of your business, you could point out something on their website, on your tablet, that could be improved, or you could show a big photo of a great candidate they should consider for their job opening. You could also show a pie chart that illustrates the huge percentage of budgets that are wasted on poor customer retention. Just keep it short, focused, and VIP. That's valuable, innocent, and professional. With Vidyard, I can then automatically upload my video, generate an animated GIF preview, and paste it into the body of my email. I realize that we've been doing something similar with video text messages for years, but because it's still not really possible to embed video in email messages, seeing these animations come through that way really gets people's attention. You'll even be able to gauge the performance with the notifications that your recipients are watching your videos. Okay, on to attempt three after another three days. If we work under the assumption that if our prospect was on vacation, we would have gotten a voicemail message or email autoresponder to that effect, we can start to assume that if we haven't gotten a response by this point, it's because the lead's just not terribly interested yet. With that in mind, we're going to push for the call just a little bit more directly. Here's an example voicemail message for our third try. Jessica, this is Doug from Team Zip. How are you doing today? I hope you managed to dodge yesterday's tornado and hail. Jessica, I wanted to share a visualization of the true cost of your latest 10 hires, so I'll go ahead and send you a second video email now. I'd like to hear about your biggest challenges at GNF and I'd love to share some specific ideas to help you add staff without the typical growing pains. I'm sensitive to your time and want to be respectful in our approach, including offering value on a brief call. Please give me a call or book 15 minutes on my calendar using the link in the email. This is Doug with TeamZip. Thank you very much. 
You should absolutely feel free to get creative with these videos. As long as you're speaking to your persona and you stick to the criteria we already outlined, keep it short, keep it focused, keep it VIP. Otherwise, feel free to experiment with fun backdrops, a cat on your desk, great outfits, surrounding yourself with toys, books, photos, or other things that demonstrate your personality. As you can probably already guess, our corresponding email for attempt three will mimic the structure of attempt two. Jessica, I'd like to hear about your biggest challenges at GNF, and I'd love to share some specific ideas to help you add staff without the typical growing pains. Please give me a call or book 15 minutes on my calendar using the link in my signature below. Thanks in advance. Here's my visualization of the true cost of your latest 10 hires. Okay, let's move on to our final outreach in attempt four. We commonly refer to this as our breakup message, and boy, does it tend to elicit a response. I suspect you'll see why we get so many replies after the fourth try once you see this. Jessica, how are you doing? I wanted to try one last time to connect by phone and see if I could learn more about you and offer some professional value, but it looks like my timing's a bit off. I understand how that works, and I'm ready to help when you need it. Please keep my emails and LinkedIn profile handy and ping me when you're concerned about your GPA. That's growing pains approaching. <laughs> I look forward to speaking. Again, my number, 555-555-5555. Thank you very much. And then straight into our corresponding email. Jessica, I just left you a voicemail and wanted to try one last time to connect by phone to learn more about you and offer some professional value. It looks like my timing's a bit off. I understand and I'm ready to help when you need it. Let's keep in touch on LinkedIn, and you can ping me when you're concerned about your GPA. Growing pains approaching. Looking forward to it. You can also have some fun with this message, if that's congruent with your persona. One thing that we've seen boost responses is including a customized meme, such as those you can easily create at memegenerator.net. A simple, are you sure? With the prospect's name, often gets a laugh and reply and can warm the lead up even more for a positive conversation. By far the most important thing for attempt four is that you come across as understanding and content. If you sound irritated that you haven't gotten a reply, you probably never will get a reply. Always give the prospect an out, such as empathizing with the fact that we're all busy and our timing could be off. The better you make them feel about reaching back out without embarrassment, the more likely they'll do so. So please take some time to customize your warm call scripts in the blueprint and then share them in the group comments for feedback. I'll see you in the next lesson.